That means double important. You can't let x equal 1. This is why we can't let q equal p, because we only have one point, right? You can't find the slope. It fails. It's undefined at that point. This is why q can't equal p. If it does, if you try to find the slope of the secant at that point, move q all the way down and then plug in the x-coordinate, if it's the same thing, you're going to get something that's undefined because you're trying to find the difference between points that don't exist, a difference that doesn't exist. And that's going to be, you're divided by zero. The, there's no difference in the x-axis. That would mean you're divided by zero. You get something that's undefined. You get an undefined slope. That's a bad thing. So we can't let q get all the way to p. True? All right. What can we do? Now, this is going to blow your mind. You ready to get your minds blown? Like a mind grenade. <laughs> you ever seen Yes Man? <laughs> Watch Yes Man. It's so fun. I had a ripple. You all have a ripple? It's called a ripple. Right. If you've not seen it, that just sounded really stupid. <laughs> you watch Yes Man. It's pretty funny. Now, so, next part. Gonna blow your mind. Can you factor that? Yeah. In fact, learning what we knew about acid and stuff like that, you know that if you have zero over zero, it's factorable because of well, some stuff in mathematics that I, I haven't bored you with yet. But if you ever have uh, the no some number that, that makes zero, it means that that's a factor. If you have some number, the same number that makes two polynomials zero, it means they have a common factor. We've got a common factor here. In fact, if you were to factor <laughs> this, this is going to give you x plus one x minus 1 over x minus 1. Agreed? Okay. Do you think, see anything that simplifies out of that? X minus 1. Aha. Now this is cool. Now this, this is interesting. Very interesting. What we're going to do is we're going to be able to simplify out this thing. Now I know what you're thinking. Well, wait a second. Can't you not simplify out a domain issue? Isn't that a problem for you? And the answer is Yes and no. It would be a problem normally. However, watch carefully. Are we actually <coughs> letting x equal 1? Is q actually getting to the point p? No. So is x actually equaling 1? No. We're getting really, really close. I'm talking like 1.000000 forever and then a little bitty 1 at the very end of it. Really close. But it's never actually equaling 1. So keep in mind, when we do this, we're not getting rid of any do we're not really altering the domain whatsoever because we already knew x wasn't equal to 1. So we're, we have this little restraint already, x isn't going to equal 1. So then what we know is, okay, the slope of the secant now equals <coughs> x plus 1. <coughs> Were there any questions on this? Because I got to erase it. Do you have any anything? All right. Is this making sense to you? Do you see where the slope formula came from? Do you see how we can factor and simplify it? And now we get down to here. We don't have any problems. We're not eliminating the domain issue because we're actually not letting x get equal to 1. It's just getting really close to it. Here's the jump that we're going to make, OK? Here's the jump. So that was true. That's what we have down. What I'm asking you is, as <coughs> Q gets closer to P, so basically as X gets closer to 1, Q gets closer to P, that means the X variable is getting closer to 1. As X gets closer to 1, can you tell me what happens to the value of the secant? Let's try some, okay? Think about this for a second. Just, just do a little bit of math with me. Let's say we started at the point uh, 4, 16. So X would now be 4. Plug in 4 here, how much would you get? Okay, now let's move it down to 3. Plug in 3 here, what would you get? Move it down to 2, how much would you get? Okay, move it down to 1.5, how much would you get? 2.5. Move it down to 1.3, what would you get? 
Move it down to 1.1, what would you get? Move it down to 1.01, what would you get? 2.01, good. Move it down to 1.00001, what would you get? Move it down to 1.00000 forever, and then a little one at the end, what would you get? 2.0 forever and little one, wouldn't you? Would you say that as this thing gets closer to one, the slope of our secant gets closer to two. Would you say that? Because I'm plugging in things really close to one, I'm going to get out things that are plus one, really close to two. Does that, does that make sense to you? Our, our secant should be really close to two. Here's what that says. This lets us make the jump. This is a limiting position. It says that we know the limit of the slope of the secant line is two. What that means for us is that the slope of the tangent line actually is 2. That's the jump. It says the secant line at this point, if x gets super, super close, really, really close, if x gets really, really close to 1, the secant line gets really, really close to 2. Now, I can't let x equal 1, but I can make the jump that if I could let x equal 1, the slope would be 2. That's the jump there. Do you guys see the jump? This is the, the using limits to make the jump between a secant and a tangent. So because the secant's approaching two, we say, okay, we got this. That's called a limit. We're going to talk more about limits later on. But the jump is going from here to here. Now can you fill out this equation using that information? Sure. We know that it would be y minus y1, which is 1, equals the slope of the tangent. Hey, we know it's 2, x minus 1. Now, of course, we don't generally leave things in point slope. We'll solve them. Do you see where the 1, the 1, and the 2 are coming from, folks? Our point is 1, 1. Our slope is now 2. That's the slope of the tangent. If we solve it, we get y minus 1 equals 2x minus 2. Add the 1. y equals 2x minus 1. That's the slope of a curve at a freaking point. That's awesome. Oh, my gosh. Isn't that cool? We just found the first tangent line to a curve that you've done. Now granted, it's not a very hard curve, but here's what it is. I'll, I'll show it to you. You can actually graph it. Here's minus one, it crosses there. You go up two, one, two, over one. Oh, that's the point. And if I graph it, it intersects at only one spot. That's it, that's a tangent line. Isn't that awesome? Your mind should be blown. Is that why you're looking at me stunned? Like, yeah. is that your stunned face? It should yes. be your stunned face. Okay. Now, by a show of hands, after 40 minutes of doing one example, how many people are sure we talked about? Good. Do you have down, right now, the basic idea for calculus? This is the basic idea. Using limits to find this tangent of a curve at a point. Is it going to get more advanced than this? Yes, of course it is. But that's the basic idea. And we're going to do things differently when we actually get to the calculus. We need to study limits more first, uh, but we'll, we will get there. Now, the, the next thing we've got to talk about is the different problems. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it. I'm basically just going to introduce it to you because I, I know for sure you guys are not going to remember this uh, by the time we actually get to area inverted curve, so I'm going to reintroduce it to you again. But for right now, I want you to just get the idea about what's going to happen later on. Okay. So the area problem. Here's the area problem. Area problem says, can you find the area under a curve between two points? The answer is yes, you can with calculus. Only, how are we supposed to do this thing and let limits work for us? Here, here's the, the plan. Uh, firstly, can you find the area the way it is right now? No, it's got a curve to it. You can't find areas with curves in them. So what maybe would be an idea? Oh, I could, yeah, sure. If I did this and said, okay, from here, I just want to make a rectangle. Would that be an approximation? Mm -hmm. Would it be a good approximation? No, not really. However, what if I did, okay, I don't want just one rectangle. Maybe I do this. I say, okay, I want a rectangle from here to here, then a rectangle from here to here, then one from here to here, 
and then one from here to here. Is that a better approximation? The missing area is smaller, yes? That's the idea behind the area problem. What we're going to be doing is making rectangles. Why rectangles? Well, let me ask you, can you find the area of a rectangle? That's why rectangles, and they're easy to draw. That's what I have. <laughs> so if we make lots and lots and lots of little itty, teeny, bitty, weeny little rectangles like that, all the same width, but going the entire length of our, our curve, and we add up all those rectangles, are we going to have a pretty good approximation of the area? And in fact, if we make those rectangles infinitesimally small, so whereas you couldn't even slip a piece of paper between them and then add them up, is that going to be even better? In fact, if we stuck an infinite number of rectangles between this point and this point, which you can do with limits, we're going to have a perfect area, and that's the idea for the area problem. You stick an infinite number of rectangles in there and add them up. It's going to involve limits because we're letting some number go to infinity. You can't ever reach infinity, but a limit will take care of that for you. That's the idea behind the area problem. Does it make sense? Kind of? The idea of the rectangles? Trust me, we'll get much more involved later. You have no idea how to do this right now. Don't worry about it, okay? We're not even going to do a problem. We'll do that later in chapter 4 or something like that. So, let's define a limit. Uh, what a limit says in English is, what does the function do as a variable approaches a given value? That's what it says in English. So, limits. What does the function do as the variable approaches a given value? That's the question. Now, do we care what happens to the function at that value? The answer is no. The limit isn't about getting to the actual point. It's about what happens as you're approaching that point, getting really, really close. You see the difference there. In the previous example, we couldn't actually get to 1. Do you remember why? Some of you are zoning. You're zoning out. You can't have one point on the line. We'd also make an a undefined point, right? If you undefined, that would be bad. But we, we saw what happens when we get really close, the function got really close to something else. That's the idea of a limit. So we don't care what happens as you get to the value, what happens as you approach the value. Uh, for us, this is, this is exactly what we did actually kind of in our heads. What happens What happens to x squared as x approaches, let's do 2. That's x approaches 2. I could have written in English, but that's just as valid. What happens as x approaches 2? Now, do we care what happens if you plug into? No, don't care. What I care about is what's going to happen if I draw this table right here with x and f of x. And I say, I'm trying to get to 2. I don't care what that value is. What I'm trying to see is what the function is doing as I'm getting close to that thing. So what's happening as we approach it from the right? What's happening as we approach it from the left? 